So the teenage brain um, has previously thought to be just a young adult brain, but actually research has shown that it's actually quite different biologically from the adult brain, just as it is, as it is different from the children and then the baby brain. And why it is different is that it's got this wonderful mix of um, a different uh, level of ability to learn, but there may be some vulnerabilities that are still hidden in the teenage brain that are not yet at the point of adulthood that has been a focus of recent research. First of all, the teenage brain has been not necessarily a source of much um, basic science research. There's been a lot of uh, clinical trials and neuropsychological you know, evaluations of the teen brain and sort of their social behavior and education behavior, but it's been poorly understood whether the teenage brain is actually substantively different from the adult brain. And in fact, we can think of research that we know have, has been done on, say, the baby brain that has translated um, into new methods of treating, you know, babies with brain injury or early learning, you know, early childhood learning. A lot of research that's come from the basic um, field has been translated into, you know, clinical and educational use. Likewise, the the late adult brain, the senescent brain, we know that a lot of the work that's been done in basic research on dementia has been actually translated and put into use for new cures and treatments for dementia and how to manage people at the other end of life. But what's been ignored has been this sort of intermediate uh, zone of the teenage brain, which is not yet fully an adult brain. And so what we have um, and we've been giving these talks to high schoolers themselves, is trying to give them a sense of really this surge of new information that's been available but hasn't been translated yet. Not enough of the basic research that's talking, which we'll talk about in a minute, about the developing um, teenage brain has been necessarily put into use with respect to what kind of courses in high school, education, how they're um, treated in the legal systems, how they might be specifically vulnerable to um, substance abuse and addiction. And we need to get this information across because it's going to be very exciting as it will help us understand these you know, kids better and help them create tools for themselves. The teenage brain is late, a late childhood brain. It's not yet a fully mature adult brain. So they are at the end of a childhood pattern of, of brain physiology, and they're emerging the adult pattern. So they're sort of at the crossroads of these two points in development. And as you know, children can learn very quickly. They go through what we call a critical period of synaptic plasticity, where early in childhood, you know children can learn two and three languages flawlessly, whereas adults struggle to learn a second language with, with even getting a mild accident, accent under um, control. So um, the teenage, teenager is still at that peak learning. They're coming down to adult levels, but they're still more able to you know, pick things up and memorize and imprint on things than, than perhaps later in life. Now, the thing is, though, they also haven't acquired a really important feature of the adult brain, which is how the different brain areas really connect to each other. So as we get older, we develop better, stronger connections between our different regions of the brain. And it actually develops from sort of the back of your brain to the front, the connectivity of the brain. And big surprise, the last place to develop is to connect is the frontal lobe. So this process is called myelination, which is a actually a wrapping of the connections to make them conduct signal faster so that you connect up parts of your brain faster. It's probably how adults compensate for not having the brilliant learning that children have. Um, but the, so the last place to connect is the frontal lobe. Now we know that the frontal lobe has some very special properties. It's what controls insight, um, judgment, um, blocks you from too much risk-taking behavior, and these are all issues with the, the teenager brain. So teenagers are notorious for risk-taking, poor judgment, um, not really thinking through things properly, yet they can be very sharp at the same time and be memorizing all sorts of things for the SATs and, and all these standardized, te standardized tests and be whizzing through material, yet they're not showing the judgment. And so that's the paradox, that they, they are very, very sharp on the one hand 
with respect to their you know, ability to learn and their physiology that underlies learning, but the connectivity is lagging. They're not there yet. So you have very bright people who may not actually be ready for prime time in terms of their, their judgment and, and insight.